Morse. As you see, I am from Sekare University. It's very close to Istanbul, approximately 100 kilometers away from Istanbul. This is maybe third time that, that I introduce my research group uh, in our university, the lithium ion battery development group. We are studying on the different electrochemical energy storage systems. Uh, since uh, our subject is related with the positive electrodes, then I will uh, briefly explain uh, the basic requirements for the cathode materials. So the cathode materials, uh, the transition metal ion should highly oxidize for maximizing the cell voltage. For uh, obtaining high energy density, we need to increase the both cell capacity and the cell voltage. And we do not ask uh, structural changes for increasing the stability of the uh, batteries. And also we need good electronic and lithium ion conductivities with high chemical stability, and uh, we have to pro protect our electrodes against the dissolution uh, uh, of the e electrolyte. And also, of course, uh, the electrodes should be inexpensive and more environmentally uh, friendly and high light -like structures. If you look at the, this uh, graphic, uh, we can see some of the commercially used uh, and investigated cathode materials. You can see the manganese oxide has fairly high capacity, but it has low uh, cell voltage. Uh, in spite of this, manganese-rich uh, manganese -rich cathodes still provide an exploitable opportunity, and uh, the uh, manganese is less toxic when compared with the cobalt, and the cost is uh, lower. So what we use, we have used the hydrothermal synthesis technique to produce the different polymorphs for the manganese oxide. By uh, optimizing the parameters, then we have produced the alpha, beta, and manganese oxide uh, aggregate materials. You can see here the scanning electron microscopy structures that all of them uh, uh, have different tunnel type structures and uh, their uh, production uh, temperatures and time are different. Uh, then after producing the manganese oxide, then we mix the manganese oxide with the graphene oxide to produce the freestanding electrodes. These are the examples that produced uh, by uh, uh, vacuum filtering technique. And we produce the freestanding electrodes with 50% reduced glyphon oxide. The thickness is approximately 15 micrometers. And if we uh, look at the uh, uh, XRD analysis, then we have seen there is no significant interaction between the manganese oxide and uh, graphene oxide. That we produce the nanocomposite Electrodes. These are the surface morphologies of the graphene, uh, reduced graphene oxide, manganese oxide, electrode materials. And we have uh, followed two routes uh, to uh, reduce the graphene oxide. The first one is the chemical reduction by using the hydrogen solution. The second one is the thermal reduction of the graphene oxide. This is the first example, the chemical re reduced graphene oxide. You can see we have seen here alpha, beta, and gamma manganese oxide-based electrode materials. In summary, if you look at here, if we use the alpha manganese oxide, we have good stability, we have no large polarization, cell polarization, but if we shift from man alpha to beta uh, and gamma structures, you can see we have a uh, result in decreasing the capacity. And this is the summary, yes, the manganese oxide produced the highest capacity, and also, if you look at the electrochemical impedance spectrum results, we, has, we have also reduced the uh, charge transfer resistance. And also, we have used the uh, thermal reduction of the graphene oxide at uh, 700 Celsius decrease. Again, uh, we have seen we have a good composite structure, no chemical interaction between the graphene oxide and uh, active materials. And uh, what is the difference? And we use the thermal reduction. We have seen some of the active materials have been encapsulated by graphene. It is good for protect, pro, protecting the manganese uh, against the electrolyte. But unfortunately, if you look at the electrochemical results, uh, we have seen we have very poor electrochemical results. And uh, additionally, uh, when we use the beta, beta manganese oxide, we could not uh, observe, uh, produce any uh, discharge capacity. Uh, to investigate the effect of the doping elements uh, for the uh, active materials, we have decided to start with the beta manganese oxide because we could not produce any 
current by using the beta manganese oxide. We had doped with the cobalt and nickel with the same amount, approximately 0.05 uh, ratio. And you can see a very good distribution. And if you look at the XRD analysis, there is no uh, new phase. So we can see we have doped the cobalt and nickel uh, in the, with the, in the, into the beta manganese oxide perfectly. If you look at the electrochemical results that I am finishing now, this is the cross-section of the electrodes. And if you look at the electrochemical result, that in this case, yes, we can see we have produced the, the current by doping the uh, nickel and cobalt, and cobalt produced the best results. Uh, this is a summary that manganese oxide produced the highest capacity. Uh, if we add the uh, cobalt into the beta manganese oxide, we can also produce the capacity after 200 cycles. cycles. In summary, if we use graphene, reduced graphene oxide, what is the advantage of using of the graphene oxide? Uh, the different oxide provides high conductivity and stability against the uh, electrolyte. And uh, among the studied materials, alpha manganese oxide uh, that uh, in the reinforced with the chemical re redux, reduced graphene oxide produce the best results. And it shows if we use the Doping elements uh, to the manganese oxide polymorphs resulted in, result in increasing the capacity. And these are the preliminary results. We are going to uh, make a new experiments to uh, investigate the effect of the cobalt and nickel for chemically reduced structures. Okay. And thank you very much for cost action and Tipita for financial supporting. Thanks for your attention. Okay.